many people felt comfortable talking with caregivers about how they were doing, but then it, as we started asking, you know, what about asking the question or what about sharing resources, that's where people started to feel like they had less and less strong comfort. So um, we wanted to create some type of roadmap for how do you start a conversation with a caregiver? If you start to notice some of these signs of distress, you start to notice some of these red flags, what do you do next? Um, and so the first would always be to demonstrate trustworthiness. So this goes back to some of the things that Nicole touched on in the previous slide, but showing compassion, showing them that you care about them, that you have a genuine concern about them or their family or their child. Um, people feel really differently about trusting you if they feel like you have some type of general concern about them and their well being, and you're not just asking out of obligation or because it's on a checklist, um, but because you genuinely care. Um, making eye contact, sitting down with them, being at their same level if they're sitting. Um, all of those are different kind of ways that you can show them with your actions and with your body language that you are someone who can be trustworthy. Um, and I think there are probably an endless list of other examples as a way to demonstrate that you're a trustworthy person. Um, if anyone in the chat wants to type in things that they have done to demonstrate trustworthiness, I'm sure you have lots of other great examples too um of ways that you've done that uh the second being then to start a conversation so what's a specific question we can ask to get a conversation started one example might be i imagine it must be hard balancing everything on your plate right now how are you doing um and really putting the emphasis on them i think when we are in roles where our job is to care for a child whether that's in a school whether that's um in a hospital or a community setting often the jobs that we have are to focus on the child and so these caregivers may not have many experiences where someone says but how are you doing um, and so that alone can be a really powerful question um, validating the caregivers experience so when they share something with you about how they're doing making sure that they feel like that emotion is valid and that you're supporting them so it makes sense to feel that way. This sounds like it's been a really difficult journey. Again, we don't have to fix it for them in that moment. We don't have to tell them it'll be okay and give them reassurances that may or may not be true. Um, we can simply say that sounds really difficult and just validate um, that emotion that they're feeling as something that is normal and valid. And then the last being what Nicole also touched on being asked permission and share resources available. So what we know from um, the scientific literature is that the best way to help people engage in some type of change and do something new to help themselves is we always want to ask permission before we start telling them about resources or next steps they could take. As Nicole mentioned, sometimes people are ready for that. They want resources. They want anything that you can offer them that will help them. And other times they feel like they're in a place where they are not ready for those right now. They're still feeling very overwhelmed or maybe they already have resources um, and they have a plan in place and they don't need additional ones. But so always, you know, demonstrating the respect for that person that they uh, know what's best and they know what they need and always asking permission before sharing anything with them. And I'd like to speak personally to the power of this framework. This, I met Dana because she was a clinician who did all of these things in an appointment with myself and my daughter. Um, we have since transitioned our relationship to a professional one since learning of our overlap and shared research interests, but it, this is exactly what she did in a clinical setting, and it was so noteworthy to me because it had never happened before. Um, anytime it happens now, even a version of it now, I notice it, I tune in, I trust that provider a lot more, I develop a better relationship with them. Um, I brought this up to my husband and he said, oh my gosh, now that you mentioned it, nobody has ever, ever, ever asked me how I'm doing. And that's so sad because you have all of these built-in opportunities while you're already engaged with that person talking about their kid to just really simply turn it around and ask what they're doing. And to the resources piece too, even if someone already has the resource, I do this professionally, I feel like I'm very plugged in, but it sure is nice to be asked. And so just not ever assuming that somebody either does or does not have a situation under control, but just trying to say, I am here for you in whatever capacity 